Brain cancer incidence increases over time in Europe. Studies carried out in Norway, Finland, and the UK have identified a similar trend of an increase in the incidence of brain cancer over time. In the UK study, the incidence of malignant brain tumors close to where you hold your phone was highlighted. That's a pretty significant increase right here. Other effects on the brain. Blood-brain barrier permeability. The BBB is a membrane which prevents toxic materials from the blood from entering the brain. It was first discovered in 1975 that RF radiation causes the BBB to leak. Since then, at least a dozen laboratories around the world have corroborated this effect. There's no consensus on the link between BBB damage and cancer, but some studies elude to this. Brain cell loss. A Turkish study on adult female rats that were exposed to a 900 megahertz electromagnetic field found that EMF exposure caused a significant decrease of the cell number. Additionally, cell loss can be seen. In their conclusions, the researchers drew parallels between these exposures and teenagers' brains that are exposed to cell phone radiation. Brain activity. Researchers in China exposed 18 participants in RF radiation for 30 minutes, which was well within international cell phone legal limits. They concluded that 30-minute LTE RF EMF exposure modulated the spontaneous low frequency fluctuations in some brain regions brain blood flow affected. A Finnish brain imaging study found that the EMF emitted by a commercial mobile phone affects RCBF, regional cerebral blood flow in humans. This suggests that cell phone radiation affects neuronal activity. Texting affects memory. An Australian study on young adolescents found students who reported making or receiving more voice or SMS calls per week, and in a particular more of both, demonstrated shorter response times on learning tasks, but less accurate working memory. DNA damage. One-way cancer and other diseases are believed to develop is when the DNA, genetic information, in a cell becomes damaged. This damage mutates the DNA. There are many studies linking cell phone radiation exposures to different types of DNA damage. Single and double strand DNA breaks. In pioneering work, a University of Washington team found DNA single strand breaks from RF radiation exposures on rats in an initial study. A subsequent study found single and double strand DNA breaks. Various genetic effects. An Austrian study analyzed the results of 101 different published articles on the effects of radio frequency EMFs on DNA. The study concluded that there is ample evidence that RF EMF can alter the genetic material of exposed cells. Increased rates of micronuclei. Micronuclei proliferation indicates a type of DNA damage strongly associated with cancer. A Brazilian study found that electromagnetic field irradiation, low-level cell phone type exposures, during pregnancy leads to an increase in erythrocytes, micronuclei incidence in rat offspring. Several studies have found increased rates of micronuclei in the body following exposures to RF radiation. Heat shock proteins production decreased. A U.S. study exposed chick embryos to RF radiation. They concluded that this EMF-induced decrease in HSP70 levels and resulting decline in cytoprotection suggests a mechanism by which daily exposure, such as might be experienced by mobile phone users, could enhance the probability of cancer and other diseases. Oxidative DNA damage. The Guler study in Turkey exposed female and male infant rabbits to 800 megahertz radio frequency radiation and found. GSM-like RF radiation may induce biochemical changes by increasing free radical attacks to structural biomolecules. Free radical damage is associated with the development of cancer.
DNA strand breaks. This Austrian study exposed human and rat cells to mobile phone radiation and found DNA single and double strand breaks. Changes in gene expression. The Bell Yahev study found that exposing the rat brain to 915 MHz GSM microwaves induces changes in gene expression. Other studies suggest that subtle changes of gene expression associated with disease. Genotoxic effects. The Schwartz study exposed human cells to 1950 MHz UMTS. It concluded that UMTS exposure may cause genetic alterations in some but not in all human cells in vitro. Neurotransmitters impacted. Great, you know what else impacts neurotransmitters? Yeah, those psychiatric medications, antidepressants, antipsychotics, and we've got millions, of, millions of Americans on psychiatric medications walking around using their cell phones, getting doubly impacted. Their neurotransmitters are getting such a hit. No wonder we can't have any kind of adult conversation with most Americans today. Neurotransmitters impacted this Bavarian study followed 60 people over one and a half years following the installation of a new cell phone base station in their village. The study concluded that the effects showed a dose-response relationship, that it had occurred well below current limits for technical RF radiation exposures, and that these effects have great relevance for health and are well known to damage human health in the long run. In other words, the more people were exposed to cell phone type radiation, the bigger the impact on their health. Chromosome damage. A Belgian study reviewed 16 expert gene monitoring studies from around the world. In 13 of the 16 independent studies performed worldwide, it was found that RF exposed individuals have increased frequencies of genetic damage, chromosomal aberrations. Central nervous system. US-based Researcher Dr. Henry Lay comments that there are several studies which show that repeated RF exposure at relatively low power caused morphological changes in the central nervous system. Changes in morphology, especially cell death, could have an important implication on health. Injury-induced cell proliferation has been hypothesized as a cause of cancer. Reading between the lines, the studies don't tell all of the story. Here are some other things you need to know. Latency period before diagnose. To put this in the words of researcher Dr. Martin Blank, cancers do not form overnight. In almost all cases, cancerous tumors take many years to form and metastasize. This would suggest that we might be sitting on a cell phone radiation cancer time bomb. Cell phone radiation cancer time bomb. To give a sense to what this latency period could mean in terms of the incidence of brain tumors in the years to come, researcher Lyde Morgan produced this alarming graphic showing that brain tumor cases could reach epidemic proportions within the next decade. Flawed research. Not all of the research points to a link between cell phone radiation and cancer, but then that's hardly surprising given the lengths some researchers go to skew the results. This research paper also lays bare the phenomenon of study bias. This can take many different shapes and forms. Insufficient latency time, incorrect definition of regular cell phone users, cell phones radiating higher power levels in rural areas not investigated, exposure to other transmitting sources not considered, exclusion of brain tumor cases due to death or illness, etc. It's the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot of interest surrounding the link between cell phone radiation and cancer, but cancer is only the tip of the iceberg. Microwave radio frequency radiation exposures of the type emitted by cell phones are also linked to many other diseases and potentially life-threatening illnesses, including sperm damage and male infertility, miscarriages, vaginal discharge, vascular system disease, titanitis, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but childhood cancer, sleep problems, depression, irritability, memory loss, concentration difficulties, headaches, dizziness and fatigue, suicidal tendencies, arrhythmia, heart attacks, bone marrow interference, altered calcium level in cells, 
ADHD, reduction in nighttime melatonin, suppression of the immune system, arthritis, rheumatism, skin symptoms, lymphatic diseases, autism, and hearing problems. Okay, there you go. You can't say I didn't warn you. Um, please reduce your exposure. I'm, cell phones, as far as I'm concerned, should only be used in an emergency. And yet you see people walking around the streets. They're, they're talking to people in supermarkets. It, it, it's all over the place that people are, you know, they're ringing, they're talking, they're looking at pictures. They're, you can't get away from it. And you know what, guys? If you're one of those who do that, you're also putting those near you at risk. Because when you use your cell phone, it emits frequencies that don't only affect you, but they affect those within your, I, I think it's actually a three foot perimeter. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. And I really do hope that you circulate this information.